Hey Dave here and welcome back to the channel. I appreciate all you guys checking in. Well, then a, a motion simulator can be a little bit complicated, especially when you get a little bit older. So that's kind of what this, this video is about. Some really cool game changing devices that you can add to make the project a lot easier. So you have less soldering. Now, I'm kind of old, right? So I'm 62. Uh, and this is going to be my last video for the year because I, the rest of this month is fully booked. I just, there's no way I can get out another one. So I, I figured I would do it from a hotel, just kind of show you around these new products um, and kind of just go over what their benefits are. So that being said, these things are pretty cool. Okay, so I've been having some trouble um, soldering. Okay, the last couple projects really... You know, I just, I couldn't see very well. I still can't. But I'm like, you know, well, maybe it's the old soldering iron I'm using. I mean, I bought one from Harbor Freight for like, I don't know, five bucks or something. And I'm like, well, probably, maybe that's what it is. So, I got this really cool Weller. It was, it was like a hundred bucks, right? And I'm like, ah, that'll solve the problem. Perfect. It works fantastic just like my old grandpa's did, and just like my other Weller did, <laughs> works perfect. But, you know, I just couldn't see what I was doing. So next thing I know, I'm like, well, okay, so it's gotta be the lights. And even though I try to solder, like in the garage, or have plenty of uh, uh, light from the sun, or if I'm in my studio room, I'll put on these big box lights still having problems and I'm like man I was becoming frustrated and a couple of you guys have told me you know it's really frustrating it's and I'm like well maybe it's the type of solder you're using or something like that and well it was but still as you get older you don't realize that you just can't focus on these small little things so I got myself a nice 15 LED light it was pretty cheap. It was like eight bucks or something like that. But, and it has a giant, uh, I don't know if I can show you this, giant magnifying glass, 30 times, uh, 30x. It didn't help. The only thing that it really helped me see was that my dexterity was just shot. I'm looking at this thing and I'm trying to solder underneath it and my hands is shaking and the, the soldering iron's going all crazy. And, and I'm like, what the heck? You know, I'm too much coffee? No, it's just because your muscle memory and all that, it just, it just erodes over time. And super shaky soldering, not the way to go at all. All right, so the first thing, my buddy of mine from ACF, I highly encourage you guys to race there. Um, I have not been racing because I've been so so crazy busy and I've been building that new the green rig The first one I want to talk about is this electro cookie. Okay, so you get this little box You're like and this is the one with all the, the connections on top you open the box up You get it's basically a, a An Arduino add-on board. So here's where I put it on an Arduino it just goes pin for pin you get uh, some screws and stuff a little screwdriver to push down on the pins and a ribbon cable so let's take a, a little bit closer look at this thing so let's see probably can't see it Maybe you can see it. I don't know. I'll do a different video on that. But, okay, so so after, so you push it onto the Arduino. You do all your connections by just simply um, from the IBT. Um, we get our little diagram. Oh, remember to print these out. If you don't have the one with three motors and three potentiometers for three degrees of freedom, uh, just ask me in the comments and I'll send you um, I'll send you one on the email 
I can't remember exactly where I found this on the uh, xsimulator.net page, but it's but it's there somewhere. Anyway, so you can see in there that that the connections. <laughs> there's my shaky hands. Uh, connections A1, A2, A0, pins one through six, blah blah blah. They're pin for pin. Um, what's on the Arduino? So you've got all your connections on this side, and you just reference what's inside here. Now, basically, you're just going to be pushing down. Like, like, say I want to make a connection from uh, motor one. Say I want to. Say I want to make a connection from this motor. I, pin one is going to be right here, the blue, and she's going to go up to pin six. You just find the appropriate pin. You push down, shove your wire in, let it back up, and it locks it in place. It'd be the same with any of the other pins. Push down. But shove your wire in and it locks it in place. Okay, so this little thing, I never really thought about Arduino add-on boards. I know I, I bought uh, something for an add-on board for a Monster Moto that would run a, one of my big C-Flow blowers. And I did an add-on board for uh, the, the original WinSim on the Arduino. But I never really thought about this, and this is a great idea because all the pins are there. You don't have to solder anything to the Arduino, so you're not going to harm the Arduino. You're still going to get your 5 volts in and out. All your connections are on it. So I just want to say a big thanks to my buddy. And remember, it's just called Electro Cookie. Well, anyway, the link's in the description. I'm going to be using this from now on. But it does bring up one other point. Each IBT has 8 pins on them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're on the wiring diagram. How do you do this? Okay. I've been soldering right to this. But then, you know, if something goes wrong with this IBT, what are you going to do? All right. So, bingo. I, I remember using a uh, sound card uh, the, 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 I think it's a 10 pin ribbon coming off of a sound card, cutting that one side and the other side fit on the IBT on my first rig. So, so what I was like, I was like, wow, geez, why don't I just buy some eight pin ribbon connectors? <laughs> it's already done. So you just basically slide them on the IBT. Once again, I'm not real good without a lot of light. There it is. So now all the IBT connections are right there. So you can flip the IBT upside down, in and out, whatever. You just cut a little bit of the end off. Boom. And let's see if I got it. Yeah, so, so I'm just taking these wires here and you now I don't have the soldering iron with me or I would have tinned these. It's a little bit easier to get them into position on here without, I mean, if you solder and just, just tin the ends. You don't need to, because it does connect. You just, if you're old like me, and I know a bunch of you guys are, or if you're not quite as old and you don't want to mess around too much, just tin the ends. You're still going to have to solder some stuff on this project, but this is going to eliminate a heck of a lot of frustration. And <laughs> I'm recommending it because that's what I'm going to be using. So the link is up on the description. You can get these from the Amazon. Um, I tried to get longer ones, but they really didn't tell me how long they were going to be. And you want to have some, some room to, to mount your IBT, whatever. All right, so looking at the diagram again, you have your Hall Effect potentiometers. I brought two of them with me. And as you can see, you do need to, as you can see, you do need to solder um, something on here because you got five volts, you got ground, and you've got your signal wire. Okay, so you're going to have to solder that and somehow get it over to the Arduino in the proper place. 
right here. Boom, boom. Done. Not as hard as it used to be where you solder here, you know, try to cram it into the Arduino, wherever. Um, I still recommend using a small circuit board for your um, positive of five volts. This is going to be five volts and your ground and then run those two over to the electro cookie or the Arduino, whatever the top plate here. But I'm still going to be using this just to run the power and ground. All right. So we're getting closer. I mean, a lot of these connections, it's not even going to take that long. It may take, instead of taking you, uh, it was taking me like two hours to solder all that stuff together. Whereas before, when I was a lot younger, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. And I was never frustrated. And everything worked the first time. And I didn't solder things to the wrong pins. But now that I'm older, I'm realizing that I'm old. But, okay, so light bulb goes on. I'm like, hey, how about the power wires? Okay, so the mo motor wires or plus and minus. So motor wires or plus and minus. So plus 12, so this is gonna be 12 volts in if you're running a 12 volt motor. It's gonna be 24 volts in whatever off of your, your 24 volt source if you're gonna be using 24, but I'm using 12 on this thing. So I'm using a battery to connect, um, to provide that 12 volts. That 12 volts is gonna to come to here and then I've got motor wires. Now in the new rig, the green rig, I'm gonna be using different color wires per motor. So one of the motors is gonna have, gonna have two yellow wires coming into it because the motor wires are agnostic. They don't care if they're going, which way they're gonna go, uh, the motor's gonna drive both directions. And that's what this H bridge does. So, in the IBT, of course, you can see that you can use a screwdriver just to put the put these motor wires in. But what if you only what if you have um, like my rig where I'm putting all the connections way off to one side? If I want to disconnect everything, it's going to be a pain. Well, it's going to be a pain anyway. But I thought about it and I found this little these little connectors here. All right, basically, you you pop this up shove the wire in or i could shove both of them in and then put these down and they're locked in and then i would continue on with more yellow wires that way i can mount um i can put the connections to the motors closer to the motors or i can put them over on the the rig stand thing that i've been making now let me show you what these uh, let me put up a link to these things too. And I bought this little 50 piece set. So it's called Glutto Dad. Anyway, I, I don't know. It came with 50 of them, a whole bunch here. And you can connect them together pretty easy. If you want to make a block of them, kind of like this. They come individually, but you can make a block of them. And they've got these little tabs here and little insets on the other side. Take it from the bottom and just slide it up into place and they're locked together. I made a, a string of nine of these for the green rig. Everything worked just fine. Now, Okay, so the, the reason I'm doing this is to make it easier for you guys. If you don't want to spend the money on it, don't worry about it. But I'm to the point that I'd rather have more fun doing stuff than getting frustrated. And <laughs> I've been frustrated because I only have so much time. And I start working on the thing, and then I can't see it, and then all this stuff. And, and I'm like, you know, there's got to be a simpler way. And there is. And these are the things that I'm bringing to you. Uh, one other thing. As long as we're... Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So, the same guy at ACF. I'm going to use his um, 
screen name, kind of. Um, that's question mark. Oh, they're right there. Okay, so these, these, these uh, Hall Effect sensors, they're 180 degrees. So they only, they can go round and around, so you're not going to break anything once you mount it. You know, when the motor's spinning, this thing can go around and around. But it only has a sweet spot where it reads of 180 degrees, which is really cool. It's helpful, and that's what you need. You don't need one that goes all the way around because your rig is ne your motor is never going to go all the way around. It's only going to go from, like, here to here, which is, you know, maybe 95, maybe 100. It's not going to go 108, or it's not going to go... 360 so 90 180 okay but so question mark found these at a different site other than digikey instead of paying 27 dollars a piece 28 bucks they're like 10 10 bucks really gosh okay so i'm ordering some of those i haven't tested them yet but the specs are the same Links in the description. All right, so this is the original adapter board for Arduino, where I was trying to solder everything on. Frustrating. Well, I'm not going to use that. I'm glad there are only like five or six bucks. Here's a here's a regular genuine Ar Arduino. It's going to do the same thing as the clone. You just shove that cookie thing right on top of it. And I'll show you how to program this in a little bit, if you haven't seen any of the other videos. Okay, so next thing. I'm going to say yes, I like them. I did show them on a different video. That's these aluminum connectors. Now, originally when I was building my first rig, I was just, why would I buy this? Why would I buy it? Other people on xsimulator.net, who are a lot smarter than me, bought it. And they're like, oh, this works great. Well, I looked at it, and what it does is it kind of compensates for irregularities where you're mounting the Hall Effect potentiometer to something. It has to mount to the motor shaft. So this thing, uh, they take up, I don't even know if it'll fit on here, but. <clears throat> like I said, I got this. I got some. I ordered some of these with uh, some of the super thanks money that y'all gave me. You know, it doesn't fit on the shaft of these potentiometers. So what I do, I put this in. I hold it with either a pair of pliers or I put it in the vise or the drill press, and I just kind of out incrementally until I get it so that it will fit. Okay, so. These ones are on the screen, but I did have to drill out, and um, I think it's a quarter inch on the other side. So the quarter inch goes into the motor, comes off. Anyway, do it. Might as well. Um, you could use the rubber tubing, which, hey, I ran that for three years. That worked pretty good. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I don't really... Oh, another Ar Arduino. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another Uno R3. Remember, it doesn't work with any other type of Arduino other than the R3. So, if you have got one of the other types, you can connect to it, but these th it's not going to work. Don't, don't even do that. Just get an R3 or an R3 clone. If you buy a clone, they've all worked for me so far. Um, there's a potential that they won't work for you, and that's probably why they're a lot cheaper. Anyway, just wanted to pass on this information to you guys. Uh, hopefully I'm not forgetting anything, but, you know, use your sheet. If you got any questions, just ask me. I'm trying to do this rig slow and take some thought to it. Um, and I'm trying to pass on along the information that's, that's good instead of just blah, and you figure it out yourself. Hopefully that would, that's what separates my channel from 
some of the others. Um, but anyway, hey, all right. So like I said, end of the video, my last video of the year. I'm gonna be doing uh, just, I gotta do a, a West Coast uh, thing. And um, you know, Christmas, the holidays, New Year's, all this stuff. I got people coming over. There's, it's, it's just, I won't have time. So, and oh wait, before I forget, I'd still, I need to call or get in contact with Dustin one more time, just to make sure that the licenses that I have to give away are still valid. I don't know if there's a timer on them or what, but I do have some licenses for Sim Tools Pro. So I'm, I can't do it for Christmas. I'd like to give it to you guys, but I just don't have the time. So we're going to have to do that first part of next year. And um, when I come back, all right, guys, uh, just give it a thanks, uh, thumbs up and a thanks and or comment. Comment would be better because you could tell me about what you're building. If you've had any problems, maybe these things can solve the problems. I know that a lot of old guys or older guys, I, they're probably having the same problems as me um can't really see that good Just shaky hand trying to solder <laughs> okay all right so next time dave out